Hey, I'm Travis. And I'm Adele. And we are The Noble Marriage. We hope that through our channel, you will be inspired and motivated so that your marriage will be all that God created it to be. It's really also important that you find someone who is a safe person to share with, meaning they will be there to listen to you and to speak truth into you. So I highly recommend if your spouse is not the person that you can safely share with, have a friend, like find a therapist, find a coach, find somebody that you can process what's going on. Because what I really got is it is big and loud. And I could not process without like words coming out of my mouth. And so if I left it inside my mind, it would get louder and louder and really hold me captive. And so sharing words with somebody is so, so helpful in the healing process. And then what it allowed me to do was share more effectively, like what was really going on for me instead of trying to process all of it at the same time. Right. So find that safe person that you can really trust and lean on. So the next part that I really experienced on a very intense level is spiritual warfare. Wow. I was under attack in my thoughts from the moment I woke up till the moment I went to sleep. And that was not something that I was dealing with prior to experiencing this loss and this anger that I was going through. And so, I, what I did was I got out three by five cards because we have two weapons to fight spiritual warfare. We have prayer and we have God's word. And both things are extremely powerful in fighting off the enemy. And I could feel the enemy's attack um, because it would be just like whispering one little thought into my mind and that one thought would take me to the darkest place where now I'm experiencing raging anger. I mean, this intense pain in my heart, but the pain I felt in my heart was so, so deep. I thought it was never going to go away. And what I realized was that if I have these three by five cards with me at all times, I kept them on my person that I could whip it out and read it out loud and the thoughts would go away. It was, it was really cool for me because nothing else was working for me. That is so cool. So I would, that's why I would carry them on, on me because I needed them accessible as quick as possible. So when I was at work, I would scoot to the bathroom, get my card out, read it out loud. And you have to read it out loud because the enemy cannot hear our thoughts. However, he can influence our thoughts. So when we're fighting him in spiritual warfare, we have to use our words to fight him off. Otherwise, he can't hear you or, you know, whatever evil spirits are around, they can't hear. So um, they would go away. And I started to experience like access to freedom through that of a clear mind and not having to think about what he did 24 seven. And then the next thing is prayer. I was constantly in prayer with the Lord, asking him for more strength, more courage, more bravery, wisdom on how to know how to process everything how to know what's important and what's not important for my healing. Um, and he was just so gentle with me during that time. And he just continued to show me little steps that I could take. And so I recognize like when it comes to what the Bible says about capture every thought, it literally means from the first thought, which means I had to be aware of what was going on for me. And so I would notice sometimes I wouldn't notice until I'm like 10, 15 thoughts in, and it is so much harder to recover. So I really got that. Okay. One thought is all I can do. That's it. And I have to capture it and then I have to let it go. 
And that was probably one of the hardest practices with being with my emotions and capturing my thoughts. I imagine that would be, that sounds so intense. And I watched you go through that intensity over and over and over. Yeah. And that seems very tough. Yeah. I would be driving. That's when it would hit me the most is when I was driving because it was quiet and I had my thoughts, me and my thoughts. And they never would take me to a good place. And so I would say out loud, not today, Satan. You are not going to get me to go down that path because I am focused on my healing, not on being a victim. And those thoughts would take me right back to the whole victimhood. Woe is me. He hurt me. How dare you? All of that stuff was just wasn't it. It was not helpful to my healing. And I was not perfect at that. I mean, you really saw that sometimes I went down that trail and you really saw how dark it was for yes. me. It was very, very difficult to get out of that black hole. And there were times that I would stay in it for days before I would feel the Lord say enough, like enough with it. You are torturing yourself. And so just being present with um, spiritual warfare and recognizing what is going on in your mind so that you can start the process of healing because those thoughts like just keep in mind whatever loss you're experiencing if spiritual warfare is showing up it is only to make you small keep you ineffective and keep you from reconnecting with other people in your life because if the enemy can do that he wins yeah Jesus died so that you don't have to remain under the influence of the enemy. And so, like Adele said, speak that out and cancel that in the name of Jesus whenever yeah. that comes on you. So that was such a great conversation, Adele. And you gave a lot of knowledge and experience of how you work through grief and how you help other people, how you coach them through grief. I imagine there's a lot more ideas and suggestions that you have. Um, let's help other people out. Put them in the comments below and give us some tips and ideas and other people tips and ideas how you personally have worked through grief. Thanks for watching today and join us next week for a continuation of our topic of grieving is to take responsibility for my own healing completely separate from anything that he has going on. Meaning because when we're relying on someone else to take this away and make me feel better, it's never going to happen. I think when our body goes through that, there's a level of PTSD and you need a lot of sleep during that time because I would experience triggers like nobody's business. I would literally step outside the house and something would trigger me. If you're also dealing with infidelity like I was, you know, I just want to say that questions that you have about why may not serve you. Is because the answer to that question cannot satisfy your desire no. for, for why. Have, there's no answer that would ever right come close to justifying why that happened however the reasons why are because of his heart and what he had going on in his heart there's a pain that's underlying there's something else that's underlying in the heart that would need to be discovered and here's the truth it never works no. it never covers up the pain because we're all looking for uh, god to fill us but we look for it in other areas if you know somebody who has been affected by infidelity, please share this video. Like we want marriages to get healing. We just feel so much passion about like getting information out there to couples that are struggling today. And so if that is you, or if you know someone, please share it. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.